In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at indeterminate differences. Again, these are situations where we don't necessarily know what the limit is going to be approaching as we look at it. And you see here are the two types of situations that give us one of these. The first is if you have infinity minus infinity. The second one is basically the same thing where we do negative infinity plus infinity. Uh, the question really there is what is it going to equal? And it's going to depend on the original equation that is involved with the limit in question. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at two such examples. This is the first of those. So we're going to be looking at how do we evaluate this particular limit. Now, of course, the very first thing we should always try is we should just try direct substitution. So I'm going to try taking this zero, and I'm going to try just plugging that in for x into both of the uh, x terms there that we have. So we're going to figure out what is cosecant of zero and what is cotangent of zero. Now, you probably don't have those memorized. So let's actually remember what each of these is defined to be. Cosecant, remember, is 1 over sine. So cosecant of 0 is 1 over sine of 0. And then cotangent is cosine over sine. And so cotangent of 0 will be cosine of 0 divided by sine of 0. Well, if we take a look at each of those then, on the first one, 1 over sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0. And then cosine of 0 is 1, and then sine of 0, of course, is still 0. So both these end up being 1 over 0. And here in the context of our limits, that means that we end up with a situation of infinity minus infinity, which is why this one is here in the indeterminate differences section. Once I got to this point, I'd have to say I can't know it without doing something else. Hence, L'Hopital's rule has to enter into it. So our first step is that in order to use L'Hopital's rule, we have to have a quotient. That is, I have to turn this into a division problem, basically a big old fraction. And so I'm going to have to rewrite this particular subtraction problem as a quotient. The nice part is we've actually already kind of had a preview about how we could do it with this particular problem. Because I'm going to be doing the limit, and remember, we do always need to keep track of writing the limit as x is approaching whatever it's approaching at each step along the way. And we do that until we plug the number in. Otherwise, if you drop off the limit, there's going to be problems that come up. All right, so remember when we were plugging in 0 and just trying direct substitution, we turned each of these into a fraction involving sine and cosine. That's actually how we can turn this whole thing into a quotient because the cosecant was 1 over sine, and the cotangent was cosine over sine. Now, we have two fractions, which is good, but it's not where we need to end up. We need to end up with a single fraction. But you'll notice here, we already have a common denominator. So making it into a single fraction should be a little bit more straightforward as a result. So I carry down the limit, and then I go ahead and combine the two fractions so then I'm going to do 1 minus cosine of x on the top. And my common denominator there was sine of x. So that, of course, is what's going to be on the bottom. Now that I've done that, I now have the difference rewritten as a quotient. And now that it is a quotient, I can now go to L'Hopital's rule like I normally would. So in order to use L'Hopital's rule, we're going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately. So let's go ahead and do that here. Again, carrying the limit down. So on the top, the derivative of cosine, remember, is negative sine. So the derivative of negative cosine would be a positive sine. And of course, the 1 goes away because the derivative of 1 is 0. So it's going to be 0 plus sine of x. Then the bottom, the derivative of sine of x is going to be cosine of x. All right, we've done the L'Hopital's rule of taking derivative on top and derivative on bottom. I'm now going to do direct substitution to see if that was enough. If not, I'll go back and do the derivative again. So direct substitution now means that I'm going to be doing sine of 0 over cosine of 0. And sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. And so notice we no longer have an indeterminate form. So that tells us this will give our answer. We will not have to go and take any more derivatives in order to be able to get our answer. So I now have 0 over 1. What does 0 over 1 equal? 0. And so then that is our final answer here, is that this limit is approaching 0. 
in this last example, we're going to be evaluating this limit, whereas x is approaching infinity of a polynomial. Well, if I tried direct substitution at the start, which is where I should always start with these, I'd end up with infinity squared minus infinity, which is going to be infinity minus infinity, which is one of those indeterminate forms. Okay, so that tells me that I need to change the form of this particular equation. Well, if I'm going to try to be able to turn this into some sort of a quotient, a fraction here, I'm going to end up needing to be able to uh, first turn it into a product, which I could do by actually factoring out an x from both terms. And so I end up with x times x minus 1. And then I'm going to come back to this step here in a minute. But first, let's go ahead and continue working this through from here and see where this takes us. So I now have the x multiplied out front. I can now try to turn this into a quotient. So I'm going to make that x that's out front be multiplied, and I'm going to make that part of my denominator by doing it to a power of negative 1. And having gotten here, I could then apply L'Hopital's rule by taking the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Now, before I do anything else with this, I do want to try cleaning it up. So I'm going to turn this into a, the x approaching infinity of, now, the x to the negative 2. I'm going to make that a positive exponent, so I'm going to move it into the top. And if I do that, I would have 1x squared over negative 1, which of course can simplify even further, right? We don't need those 1s in there, and when we divide by a negative, that gives us a negative. And so we ended up with negative x squared. Now if I plug in that infinity, I end up with negative infinity squared. And yes, the negative is outside of that, so we'd be doing the squaring first. And so that would end up giving us negative infinity. There's just one little problem with this answer. It's not right. Now let's go back and see what's going on here. Remember I said I was going to be coming back to this step up here? Well, let's take a moment with that step. What if I had written it that way and then plugged in the infinity with direct substitution? That would have given me infinity times infinity minus 1, which is infinity times infinity. You notice that is no longer an indeterminate form. We can actually know that that would equal infinity. And so what ended up happening with this one is that by changing the form, we actually got rid of the indeterminate form in the first place, and so didn't need to do any of this down here. And once again, what we see is that if we try to apply L'Hopital's rule, when we don't act absolutely have to, we end up with an incorrect answer. And so we really do need to keep checking as we go to make sure that we didn't solve our problem just by rewriting it in a different form. So this is particularly going to come up with polynomials like this. When you see the polynomial approaching infinity, then you may be able to just factor out that x and then go ahead and go straight to your answer from there. Now, you might also be thinking that there is also one other way you could have known this answer as well. Notice that this is the limit as x is approaching infinity of a polynomial. That means that your end behavior knowledge would allow you to be able to figure it out as well, because you know that this is going to be a parabola, and so the end behavior is up, up. So as it approaches infinity out here, it's heading upward toward infinity. And that's how we can also check ourselves as we go. So remember, you still have some of those other tools available to you. And so if you try to force L'Hopital's rule into it, you could end up causing yourself some trouble.